I had a call from a fellow by the name of Fred Malik. Fred Malik said, I am the White House recruiter for Richard Nixon, and I'd like to talk to you. I, <clears throat> I was a kid from Brooklyn, immigrant family. The likelihood of somebody in the White House talking to me was completely out of the question. So I said some nasty things to him and told him I was going to hang up. <clears throat> and uh, I, he's a good friend today, so we often talk about that. Uh, he asked me not to hang up, gave me a phone number, right, which I called back and was the White House switchboard. Nixon had decided that he wanted a manager in each department. It uh, didn't have to be a political guy, a ma demonstrated manager, because he was going to reorganize the cabinet. So I went to Washington. I interviewed with uh, then the Secretary of Labor, and I ended up Assistant Secretary of Labor for Management, which to me was incredible for a guy with my background to end up in D.C. with that kind of a post. What did that feel like? It felt really unreal. Uh, shortly after my, my uh, getting the job, <clears throat> I was invited along with a handful of other new recruits to go meet with President Nixon. And, uh, and the, the drill was you, you, you were invited in one at a time, you shook his hand, he said a few things, you said a few things, he gave you a presidential tie clip, uh, and, and you left. Uh, so it was my turn. I walked in. I shook his hand, and uh, he said something about, I know you come from New York. And uh, I looked at him, and I, I couldn't talk. I simply couldn't talk. I was just paralyzed. <laughs> uh, he was more uncomfortable than I was, I guess. So he reached over to get the box of high clip, and he knocked over the stack. <laughs> it was a very strange moment. I quickly took the tie clip, shook, shook his hand, nodded thank you, and left the room. So that, if that, that explains my, my feeling. It was unreal for me uh, with, with my, my background to find myself in, in that position, and I was overwhelmed. Tell me about the weeks when the Nixon administration was falling apart. Were there some moments that stood out for you as someone who witnessed it from within? Yeah, it was uh, an eerie time. Uh, it was the end of the Nixon period, and uh, I used to play tennis with Alan Greenspan uh, on the White House tennis court. And the country was up, was tense. The Watergate thing had gotten considerably worse, and, uh, and it was clear that the president was going to be in trouble. And Alan and I changed in the uh, gym at the old executive office building, and then we walked out to walk around to the White House court, and we had to go around the gates. And uh, there must have been a 200 people at the gate looking in, not saying anything. It was just quiet. Um, <laughs> we, we took one look at that site and we went back in and changed back into our civilian clothes and didn't play tennis that day. It was a very, very eerie time. Uh, and then ultimately, uh, I, I had a call. Paul O'Neill, who was Secretary of Treasury here uh, for George Bush, he, he and I were both at OMB and had offices next to each other. We had a call, and he and I walked over to the White House, and uh, Richard Nixon came out and cried. He had makeup on, and uh, you could see the tears. He was with his family and told us he was going to resign. We watched him walk out the stairs of the White House to the helicopter. It was Army One then, no longer, <coughs> no longer the presidential helicopter. It took him to Andrews, and Andrews' plane took him to California. A couple hours later, we were called again, back in the same room for the squaring in of the new president. I went home that night. I can tell you, I, my emotions were completely in a knot, and uh, it's a moment in time in life you just never ever forget. Can you put those into words a little bit? Those feelings. Feelings. It was uh, a sorrow for the country, a sorrow for the man and his family, Nixon. Uh, it was strangely enough. Not a moment of anger, where you would think you would get angry at this guy for what he did and put everybody through. Uh, it was just a, it was just a sorrow, and and a little bit of anxiety. 
but I had no idea how the country was going to adjust to this change. And today, that Nixon crowd uh, have a uh, formed an organization, and they meet regularly, or once a year, and they do everything they can to kind of repaint Nixon's image and point out the good things he did. And he did the good things. I mean, he did, what he did to China, getting us into China. Uh, I, was, I led a task force that led to the Clean Air Act while Nixon was there. So Clean Air Act came from him. Uh, and uh, he was a strong guy, had strong cabinet. But did, he had a very weak side. But watching the people around him be let down was, uh, was uh, so, is it, uh, I will never forget that.